Form 4, Physics. Today, we are going to go into a new chapter. So, before we begin, uh, I think you guys just heard the news. There's an extension of the MCO until the April of 14th. And as much as you are happy there's no school, uh, I'm a bit sad because there's no tuition also. Which means uh, it's different teaching you all online and teaching you all in the classroom where we get to interact and you know, there's a human aspect. But anyways, as the saying goes, the show must go on. Okay, so para plaja, um, this is uh, our physics class. I left, um, I think I've covered everything with you all so far for Form 4 for this week except for physics. So physics, we have actually finished the whole of chapter 2. The last lesson we learned was on impulse and impulsive force. We tried some questions also. So firstly, I really hope you already finished uh, your work for chapter 2. If you haven't, then you should do it. Okay, there's no excuses. Many of you were making excuse last time saying you don't understand graph, you don't understand uh, ticker tape. But you know, this is the time for you to sit down and just look through every single example and try to understand it and do lots of questions. Okay. So, <coughs> kita akan masuk ke dalam uh, bab tiga. And chapter 3 is one of the most beautiful topic for physicists, untuk ahli fizik, which until today, it's still a mystery to many of us. Why? Because we just don't understand this. We really do not understand the meaning of this word. It's a G word. The G word that stands for T. Okay, now for you to appreciate this chapter before I continue, I need to explain to you why is it so hard to understand gravity? Well, many years back when uh, a lot of historians, yeah, a lot of philosophers and historians used to study about the world, they used to think of gravity as something that just existed because it has to exist. Maksudnya, the problem with them is they don't want to know why it exists. Kenapa, kenapa ada gravity ni? Is gravity available everywhere or is gravity only on earth? And then came along a man called Sir Isaac Newton. You know, we all hear the story about Sir Isaac Newton and um, we get irritated like, why la, Newton came my life, Newton came my life only, uh, uh, my life susa. But that's what you were thinking, without Newton, I dare say, you won't even, watching this, you won't even be watching this video right now. Yeah, you will not understand why, but I'm telling you. And without Newton, you use waves and GPS and all that. Without Newton, you can't do that. You can't, you can't use waves. You can't use GPS. You can't even use your phone. Why? Because in order to use all of this, we depend on satellites. Can you simply launch a satellite up into the sky? I want you guys to imagine with me. Just, just close your eyes. Pajamata. Let's go back to 1600. Let's all go back to 1600. 1600. That is a year right now. Do we know how the earth looks like? Was there anybody that actually went out of the earth and actually took a picture and said, oh my god, earth is a sphere, it's a globe. Guys, don't forget, even till then, in the time of Com Copernicus and even the time of uh, Ptolemy, we used to start thinking, before Copernicus, which is Ptolemy, we used to be thinking that the earth was in the center of everything. Today we laugh if somebody says, you know the earth is the center of the universe, you laugh. You say, they, 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 don't bullshit with me, the earth is part of it. Correct, but imagine you are in 1600, do you know that? Are you aware of that? You are not. You don't even know how the earth looks like, you don't even know the shape of the earth. You would think the earth is a, a hemisphere, alright? Can you, if you don't even understand how the earth works, if you don't even understand apakah itu gravity, do you even think you can launch something known as a satellite outside? Because guys, <laughs> let's put it this way lah. I give you a challenge. This is a pen, right? You all have a pen with you. Okay, take the pen and just throw it up. Throw it up. Come on, just throw it up. Can you fight gravity in the first place? Can you launch something to fight gravity? You can't. So when you can't even fight gravity, when you don't understand gravity, how are you going to launch a satellite? Let me ask you. A satellite can only be launched when you can understand gravity, you can fight gravity. Then you can go and put a satellite. And with a satellite, today we're using our phone, we're playing the food, we're communicating you and I, the speed of light. But we forgot about the man who made it all possible. So why Sir Isaac Newton? Sir, one apple fell down his head, he became good in gravity. 
Then if you sit down in one pa hasin punya durian kebun, one durian falls in your head, you will become power lah. No, right? Let me explain to you the apple story first. I need you guys to understand why Newton was excited about this theory. So once upon a time when Isaac Newton was going to his college in Trinity, you know, there was a moment when the college had to be closed. Uh, a lot of reasons people say, one of it is because there was a saranga, like a sort of balalang saranga called locus, and it was all over the place. And so the university said, we have to close the university. Like right now, school said, I have to close because of coronavirus. That time this thing happened. So Newton used to study near the garden there, and there was an apple tree um, there, okay? So this is an apple tree, and here Newton was sitting down, and he was lying down, okay? And suddenly, um, you know, just like normal, what happened was um, an apple actually fell down, okay? Now, whether the apple fell on his head, fell on his uh, part, so, I mean, whatever, we don't care. We don't care. The point is the apple fell down. So, you know what Newton was thinking, pleasure? He was thinking, wait a minute. The apple was stationary. Apple tadi to pagun. For it to fall down, that means from your velocity at zero, your velocity increased down. Isn't that acceleration? That is called pachutan, right? What is pachutan? Kada perubahan halaju. The rate of change of velocity. So something would have happened there. And if you have a change in velocity or you have an acceleration, then according to Newton's second law, F equals to MA. That means if there is A, there must be F. Fine. So he called this force, there are many types of force in the world, he called this force the force of gravity, gravitas. Why? Because gravity pulls everything to itself, towards the center. So the apple was falling down to the center. Very good. Well done, Isaac Newton. But you and I would have just stopped there and just grabbed the apple and makan. Be like, wow, free apple, rezeki lah today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Makan. Not Newton. You know what he started thinking? Hmm, if this force can pull an apple inside, then he looked far and said, why can't the same force pull the moon inside? Is it the same force? Adakah daya yang menarik apple dan daya yang menarik bulan, adakah hanya daya yang sama? Is it the same kind of force or are they different? If it's the same, why is it that the apple can actually fall to the ground? but not the moon. So he started questioning all these things. There must be a reason for that, you know? And the thing about Newton is he's a true scientist. He's a true physicist. He will not just accept if you say, you, uh, bro, that's life, bro. That's how it is, you know? Apple is small, so fall down. Moon is big, cannot fall down. <laughs> you can't tell people Isaac, like Isaac Newton things like that. It's not going to work. Instead, Newton sat down and started working out a mathematics. He always believed that if there is a law, there must be a mathematic to explain that law. That is called physics. Physics is not just, um, I think so, that something that is must happen because it's like that. That is false. In physics, if you think something must happen, where is the proof in mathematics? It must come back to back. That's why when students tell me, sir, uh, you know, I'm good in maths, I'm good in maths, but I don't like physics. For me, it's logic. And if you say you are good in maths, uh, good in physics, and you're bad in maths, also the logic. All branches of science are one. You have to know them to understand the logic behind it. Anyways, so let's go back to this story. So what happened was he started thinking and thinking and thinking. And he did a lot of research and a lot of um, um, studies. And he finally, after studying this thing called a binary star, you should pause the video, those of you who like physics, Go and read up on binary stars. Go and watch video of something called binary stars. They are stars that are dancing together right now. They are caught forever in a dance and they're dancing and dancing together. It's a beautiful dance that they do. After all that, Newton came up with one of the most important. If there's one formula which is paling penting in Newton's life to explain how gravity works around the universe, because you must understand Nobody understands what is gravity. Eh? Newton adalah orang yang pertama yang cuba memahami gravity. Newton didn't find gravity. He understood gravity. Dia cuba faham gravity. And you know what happened? He 
came up with a formula called F equals to G M1 M2 over R square. This is one of the most important formula in Newton's life. Okay, and let me explain to you what is it that he uh, meant when he found this formula. Okay, this, by the way, is called the universal law of gravitation. Okay, hukum gravity semesta. Di mana you can calculate any force you like by using this formula. G is called the universal gravitational constant. Don't think so much about it. Just know the word constant. Remember in chemistry we learn Avogadro constant. It's the same story. So it's a constant. Maxonia is a number that does not change. It's a number that's forever fixed. Okay. This too is very important. M1, M2. Newton said, Asalkan kamu ada dua jasad yang mempunyai jisim. If you got two bodies that has mass, any mass, any two objects yang ada jisim, they will have a force between them. Yes, they will have a force. Any two objects in the world. Then you take that and you divide with R square. Now what is R square? R square stands for the distance from the center of that object to the center of another object. Let me give you a simple example. We all know here is the earth. Inilah bulan dan inilah matahari. Okay, let me just draw a big sun here. Okay, right. Pleasure. This is one mass. This is another mass. M1, M2. Mereka berdua sedang menarik antara satu sama lain. Okay, they are pulling each other actually. And what you can do is, you can actually find the distance between them. And that distance is called as R. And Newton said that if you use his formula, <coughs> G times M1, which is the mass of the earth, darab M2, which is the G same of the bulan. And bahagi dengan jarak antara um, apa ni, bumi dan bulan, kamu boleh dapatkan daya atau force that is acting on them. Good, very good. But then, the same thing can happen here. This is the earth and this is the sun. They are also two masses. So again, because of this formula now, you can actually calculate the force between the earth and the sun. And not just that, our sun is going through a super massive black hole. Our sun is also rotating around something. So if you know the mass of that, that super massive black hole, and you know the mass of the sun, you can also count the force between that and the sun. Guys, can you see that in one formula, kamu boleh gunakan formula tersebut untuk mana-mana objek dalam dunia ini. Bukan saja dunia, malah alam semester. And when you can find a formula like that, that's when you become Sir Isaac Newton. Because then, it's called a universal law. Universe, that means the whole universe will follow that rule. It cannot change. Yo, I can take this formula and go to Jupiter. I can take this formula and go to Mars. I can take this formula to go any planet that I want because it's universal. As long as they have mass. That's it. So here's a thought for you. Coming back to Newton's question. Kenapa apple tu akan jatuh? Kenapa bulan tu tak jatuh? Ha. And that is because of the mass of the apple versus the mass of the moon. You see, I'll put it very simple like this. The mass of the earth does not change. M1 tu adalah jisim bumi, yang tu tak akan berubah. M2 is what will change. If you use apple, then you have to use the mass of the apple. Pelajar kamu tahu, jisim apple ni sangat, 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 sangat kecil berbanding dengan bumi. And when your mass is very small, although you are pulling the earth, but because your mass is so small, the effect cannot be seen. You must understand. Kalau jisim kamu kecil, I can't see your effect. Kalau jisim kamu besar, I can see the effect that you will be pulling people to you. Okay? So, if you compare apple, can the apple pull the earth to the apple? A bit hard because the earth is so heavy. But the earth can pull the apple down. Kenapa? Sebab apple ni sangat ringan. So, you can happily pull the apple down. But, when the earth tries to pull the moon down it's not that easy because the moon is also heavy so the moon is also pulling the earth so it's a tug of war going on here and then they found a balance and the moon said you know what bro enough lah i will just go around you the whole time so why is the moon going around the earth kenapa bumi tak pergi uh, you know mengelilingi bulan if you answered because of the mass you are following my class it is the mass the mass of the earth is so heavy and when you are heavy things will move around you 
Actually, Newton couldn't explain a lot about that. You know who explained that? Albert Einstein. But that came only 200 years later and we are not going to talk about Albert Einstein because otherwise our brain will burst. Let's talk about Newton first. Okay, lagi satu. I told you again, kalau jisim kamu besar, we can see the effect. So what happens when it comes to the sun and the earth? Is the earth moving around the sun or the sun is moving around the earth? Exactly. The earth rotates around the sun. Walaupun jisim bumi adalah besar dan jisim matahari adalah besar, tapi yang mana lagi besar. So whoever is bigger, they will pull you more. Although the force is the same, but the effect of the force is more when the sun pulls the earth. So the earth starts rotating. And Newton was the first human being in the world to explain this. Nobody else understood. So guys, this is a very interesting formula and uh, I will share with you uh, more in our next video. Okay?